Hello, I'm Brett Moss, and you're watching The Defining Moment for Creating the Culture of Conscience. Our guest today is Marine Staff Sergeant Justin Harding. Staff Sergeant Harding has served as an entryman on six deployments with the 2nd Battalion, 5th Marines, during the past 10 years. He has served on four deployments to Iraq, serving in conventional and counterinsurgency combat operations, including Operation Iraqi Freedom, as well as other stability and security operations and civil affairs. In 2005, he was wounded while conducting a vehicle patrol in our Ramadi. Among numerous citations, medals, and ribbons awarded, Staff Sergeant Harding is a recipient of the Bronze Star with Valor and the Purple Heart. He also holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Bridgeport in Connecticut. He and his wife, Yuriko, from Japan, are raising three children. Staff Sergeant Justin Harding, welcome to the Defining Moment. It's really an honor for me to welcome you here to our show. Oh, thank you. The honor's all mine, actually. Thanks for coming. Yes. Our topic today is a glimpse into a Marine's life on the front line in Iraq. And I'd like to begin by inviting you to share a defining moment from your own life. I guess for me, uh, the single most defining moment for my uh, four tours in Iraq was on October 9th, 2004. We were engaged in uh, combat operations in the southern sector of Ar Ramadi. My unit, which was uh, called CAT-2 at that time, was called out on a quick reaction force. And um, our sister unit was engaged with insurgents, and we were called to kind of block in the insurgents to not let them get out and in the counterinsurgency uh, warfare it's very hard to kind of trap your enemy um, so we went out there and we set up our blocking position and um, in this blocking position several civilian vehicles tried to come through our blocking position and we would stop and search the the uh, occupants of the vehicles and we actually found uh, a terrorist team with IED equipment and uh, rocket propelled grenades and loaded magazines and they just looked like regular everyday citizens you know of our Ramadi driving around so we detained them and on our way back to bringing them to base on our return trip to the base uh, we were driving down a very uh, dangerous street and then uh, we encountered an ambush so these insurgents were actually laying a trap for us as we fought against their other insurgents in other parts of the town. Typical of uh, street fighting, there's no limits or boundaries. So my vehicle was moving very slowly as we were towing another vehicle that had been damaged by an improvised explosive device. Um, all of a sudden there was a scream over the radio of contact left and um, the next thing I know there was this huge explosion. Uh, I got to look to my left a little bit uh, and a rocket propelled grenade had sliced through my Humvee and gone through my driver and exploded in the vehicle, uh, nearly taking off the leg of my, uh, my turret gunner, knocking out uh, the Marine behind me, and then the Marine uh, behind the driver was caught on fire. Um, instantly, the turret gunner called down and yelled to the driver, push through, push through, push through, which is our standard reaction to like a, a near ambush. You know, you just want to get out of the kill zone. And I thought about it for a second. I looked over at the driver and it was clear that he was dead. Um, so I looked up to the gunner and I was like, he's dead. And then I realized my predicament. <laughs> We're in a Humvee traveling at 45 miles an hour with no driver. He's dead. Um, so then I went into panic mode and I yelled for somebody, somebody grab the wheel, grab the wheel, grab the wheel. And uh, I tried to get over and grabbed the wheel to try and pull the vehicle to a stop or trying to do something because we were speeding up and we had a, a vehicle in front of us which is a lieutenant's vehicle we were going to crash right into his vehicle so making matters worse I got up on the radio mount and with all of the gear I had on and I was a bit dazed from the blast uh, I couldn't quite get to the wheel um, I couldn't get over the dead body I just barely managed to grab the wheel and jerk it a little bit but this sent our vehicle away from our lieutenant's vehicle that was in front of us. Um, then we began to speed out of control down the road and you know what are we gonna do? Luckily the marine who caught on fire behind the driver put himself out 
and had the common sense to climb over the dead driver and jerk the wheel very, very hard. When this happened, the vehicle crashed into a telephone pole and we came to rest in an intersection. Uh, actually, for those who know, called Checkpoint 342 in Ar Ramadi, um, the crossway of Farouk Boulevards and Central Boulevard. Got a real bad situation on our hands. We're in an ambush. I have a dead Marine. I have another Marine's life who is uh, threatened. He's bleeding out. And I got, you know, bullets zinging around and just this very, very intense moment. And I don't know why to this day, but it seemed very calm to me. Um, I got a call on the radio. Did I need a corpsman? And I was like, yes, roger that, uh, Reaper 1. We need a corpsman. I have one KIA. I have one WIA. And it was like business. So uh, we went to go medevac. Halverson was the Marine's name. Um, he was dead. There was nothing we could do for him. The corpsmen, you know, these corpsmen we have in the Marine Corps are just exceptional, phenomenal. They risk their lives. They are, I mean, they're just amazing people. Um, they're not combatants, but they're trained as combatants. So this corpsman, I don't know where he came from, comes flying up the line of vehicles. He's got a pressure bandage in one hand and a pressure bandage in the other hand. He looks at my driver, and my driver is obviously dead. His body had been horribly defigured from the RPG that literally went through his chest cavity. And he didn't want to accept the fact that Halverson was dead. And I was like, hey, Doc, he's dead. Let it go. He's dead. And he looked at me again like he wanted to patch him up. I was like, he's dead. You know, go help So. Um, so I had the back of his calf taken off and was bleeding out. I guess there was an artery there that was just spewing blood. So all hell broke loose during this moment. And uh, for a, a moment there, I just kind of lost touch with reality. I remember grabbing my rifle and we were taking contact from the north and just end, you know, emptying clip after clip desperately to the north to try and suppress these guys who were trying to kill us. Um, and then I realized that uh, my buddy So uh, needed help, you know, he, you know, so I went around to the other side of the vehicle to try and help the corpsman. They were moving him out of the vehicle and they were going to move him into the evacuation truck. Um, so we got So and we were, we were, you know, pulling his body across the intersection to get him to the medev medevac truck. Um, then all of a sudden bullets started flying from the south. We got ambushed again. And I thought to myself, I'm going to die. And then I looked at the corpsman. The corpsman dropped so on the ground and jumped on top of him. He wasn't thinking about himself. Mm. He was thinking about protecting the Marine. So I just kind of caveated off of that and uh, jumped on top with him. And we sat there. And um, I looked so in the face. And he looked at me. And he's like, did you jackasses rip my camis? And I was like... Yeah, we did. Actually, yeah, we did. And uh, we just kind of looked at each other and we started laughing. In the middle of the road, bullets are flying. And then all of a sudden, this gun truck, you know, my white, uh, my white knight, uh, came flying up out of nowhere and started laying suppressive rounds to the south, effectively stopping the insurgents fire. And things kind of calmed down. And we got uh, my vehicle that was blown up, rigged for tow. Uh, we got the wounded Marine out. We got the, the, the dead Marine taken care of, um, and we began to go back to our base and kind of regroup for the next, um, next mission. This situation was a defining moment for me, and it's lasted with me to this day. I mean, it's been four years and, uh, and about a month since this event happened to me, and it's just changed my whole perception on uh, what really matters in life. 